welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Listeners, you're in for a treat. Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Today I have Jillian Bullens on the show and I'm so excited for you guys to meet her. She's a goddess, she's a queen, and she has some words of wisdom for us that you want to tune into. Jillian, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. You're just like one of my favorite people that I got the pleasure of meeting this year. And just to be on your podcast and jam with you the way that we just naturally jammed when we first started connecting and to know that it will serve the incredible people that soak in every ounce of your energy by way of your podcast and other places. I'm just so honored. So thank you. You're so welcome, Jillian. Yes, please take us on your journey. Take us and who is Jillian? Oh my goodness. Well, that's like multidimensional, isn't it? So, okay. Let's give you like the snippet. We'll talk about the human snippet. We'll talk about the business snippet. And then we'll just like, here we go, here we flow through whatever comes up. That's going to be in the most aligned, supportive way for your people. So I'm Jillian. I am a woman. I'm a soul sister. I am a mama of three little boys. I have been married to my husband at the time of this recording for 12 years. We live in Maine. I have been an intuitive life coach. Well, I've been an intuitive my whole life, but I have been an intuitive life coach by way of an LLC, like in business for about six and a half years now. And it has been a it, an incredible evolution of soul, of business, of self-expression and expansion every step of the way. My mission is to help women uncover the truth of who they are. I do that through, I've got two different coaching programs. I've got my true you school where I teach women the hows of connecting to the moon cycle, trusting their intuition, working with their chakra system and so much more. And then I've got my true you tent and in the tent, we practice what we learn in the school. We're actively working with the seasons, with the moons. There's deep, deep connective sisterhood and coaching. It's so fun. I also work one-to-one with women. And the three main focal points for me in that business world is to help women learn how to trust themselves again. And it's, it's more than learn. It's remember how to trust, how to feel their feels, work with their inner maiden goddess so that we can release the crap that's been holding us back and ascend into that intuitive being that I believe as women, we are primarily created to be. The second thing is working with cyclicality. We are not designed as start line to finish line people, beings, essences. We're cyclical and so is the moon cycle. So is the season cycle. So is the zodiac cycle. So when we can learn to connect into those essences, I actually feel like we're able to better come home to ourselves and to function at our optimized level. And then the third step is really learning how to express that, learning how to take your inner magic and your ability to manifest and to sink into that like playful highest vibration of you and express it to the world in a meaningful, aligned, true to your soul way. So that's kind of like the snippet. I'm a mom. I am a businesswoman. I am committed to my own devotional path and practice, and I'm doing it right alongside each and every single person I share openly about my experiences along the way, because I haven't perfected anything. I've gotten really good at some stuff, but I'm also a human. I'm also a soul having a human experience. So I love letting my clients and students and soul sisters know like, Hey, 
this is what I am experiencing. And my going through it, my healing it, my being with it gets to be that beacon of light and hope for you and your future self. So there we go, girlfriend. What do you think about that? All of it's so good. And as you're speaking, I'm lighting up like a Christmas tree because it's the, a big umbrella. That self-acceptance piece has to start with that self-trust piece, has to start with that radical honesty with self. Yeah. I would love to talk for you to talk on that a little deeper. Yeah. So we have been programmed, most of us, by way of societal structures, be it religion, be it academia, be it even like the, the household and the belief systems that we were raised in. We have been programmed to function a certain way, to believe things just because other people believed in them or because they told you to believe in them. And that's all well and good. Like we, you know, I, I don't like when spiritual people are like, oh my gosh, how could you let like your inner five-year-old believe what the adults were telling you? I'm like, what? Of course. I mean, that's like root chakra stuff. That is safety. We are just looking for safety and, and like a safe place to land when we're five years old. And also as an adult, as an iteration of you that has the capacity and the understanding to go back and say, huh, so that's where that belief started. And I've perpetuated that belief, even though now that I've sat with it, I don't actually believe that thing. And there's a lot of dissonance that can come up with that, of course, but I believe that when we start asking the question, why, right? When we start looking at the stories that we have told for 5, 10, 15, 50 years and start saying, well, but where did that come from? Why, why did I say that? Not in a self-judgment way, but like in a self-curiosity way, we start to recognize the true beliefs that we have, the true feelings that we have, and we can hold on to them if they still fit, they still feel good. Or we can release them and replace them with beliefs that are actually in alignment with what our soul signed up for. Mm -hmm. Coming into the human experience, we all jumped into this big old pot together and we were like, okay, we are going to impact each other. And that's great. I believe in soul contracts. And I also believe that of our own free will, when we utilize that free will to tap into what our soul is really here to do, was here to not just heal, but to ascend through, to like raise the vibration on, then we're truly following our soul's path. We're truly allowing ourselves to go to the places that we signed up to truly go to. So much goodness. So that release piece that stuck out for me so huge because we get to choose whether or not we're going to release it or we're going to keep holding on to it. Yeah. So I would love for you to speak deeper on the release piece of it because we come up every day with different thoughts and different beliefs and we're like, no, this isn't serving me anymore. That release piece, we're not taught. Right. We're not taught a lot of this. Absolutely. No. <laughs> That's why I created a school, Josie. <laughs> That's why you do your sacred work in the world. That's why so many conscious women are like, hey, here's where I can make an impact because I didn't learn that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so the release piece, a couple of things are coming up for me specifically. The first thing is that we do have the opportunity to choose. Mm -hmm. And when we recognize that, it is so freeing because oftentimes through most of our life, we're told, no, listen to what I say, or you can't do that because I said this. And so when we get to that point of like, huh, no, I can choose to continue holding on to this, or I can actually choose to release it. What a gift mm -hmm. that, that experience is in and of itself, but a couple like specific things that I like to talk about when it comes to release. So let's talk about the moon first. The moon is 28 ish days per cycle, or has 28 ish days per cycle. It starts with the new moon when you can't see the moon in the sky. Mm -hmm. And there are eight phases that I like to follow. There are four from new moon to full moon and four from full moon back to new moon. At the new moon, we set new intentions, right? We get crystal clear, like the sky is black. It's a blank canvas, right? Like mm -hmm. we can create anything. We can start planting the seeds on what we want to grow. It's an incredible time to start like dreaming into things. At that full moon, when the moon is big and bright in the sky, everything is illuminated. All that's working and all that's not working. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the word release kind of comes with a negative connotation mm -hmm. until you understand that it's actually such a blessing because what we as humans tend to do, if something hasn't worked, we shame ourselves for it. 
what was I thinking? How could I have done that? When it's like, oh, no, no, no. I just tried something. Mm -hmm. Some of it worked. Some of it didn't work. Cool. Good to know. Now in the light of the full moon, I can release what was no longer, what is no longer serving me. Mm -hmm. That had to do with those intentions. I can pivot. I can shift and I can celebrate what has worked. I can also celebrate the fact that I released what I don't need anymore because now I can bring in more of what I do need now that I know, right? So then we can utilize that energy to continue on the cycle. So that's like the moon aspect of that. But going off of that, think about your closet. And we were just talking about clothes before you started recording. We were talking about like, just like feeling good in your body and like really like being that like glamorous self that we are. So think about your closet. Think about when you haven't gone through your closet in like 10 years. And it's like, okay, that thing is filled to the brim. It's taken, it's gunked up, right? So we all know what our closet looks like when it gets gunked up. Well, internally, we get the same way. If we haven't taken stock of our beliefs, just like we haven't taken stock of which clothes are like so out of style or do not fit anymore, or like, yeah, I bought that bef- like 10 years before I had three kids. Like, like you gotta do that like, deeper look to say what works for me now Mm -hmm. right so like when you can actually take the clothes out of your closet when you can release the clothes that you're not going to wear you create space right you create space in your actual closet your only job at that point once you have released is to be intentional with what you put back in right because the universe is a vacuum The universe is always going to want to fill voided space. So if we have the intention to release something, I mean, go girl, that is (laughs) next level, wonderful magic right there. Right. But beyond that, there's got to be a follow-up intention to replace it with love, replace it with higher vibe, replace it with things that serve you now. So if we're going to go back to that full moon analogy, If you're releasing what no longer serves you based on your intention, then you get to be intentional and say, and say, okay, that way didn't work, but I'm going to intuitively and intentionally fill it with going this way, Mm -hmm. trying something different, getting excited about what possibilities lie on the other side of my release. So good. That's just so brought good. you in a couple of different directions. How are you feeling? so good. <laughs> Especially the analogy of your closet. That, that paints the picture so well mm-hmm. for, because the same thing, when you get rid of it, it's like more goodness comes in. Mm-hmm. But that intention piece is so huge. It's so, so huge. It, and you know I what? I have an actual, it. like, <laughs> it's amazing. I have a, like a true story. So I personally literally did a closet cleanse once and I was so excited. I let go of so many things. And we're talking about like the things that every year that I did the closet cleanse, I was like, no, I'm just going to hold on to that one more year. So I did like the big one, right? I kid you not. The next day, my sister texted me saying, Hey, I just went through my closet. Do you want my hand-me-downs? And I literally, I literally said, no, I was like, no, because right. The universe wanted to fill the space. And I was like, no, thank you so much. Where normally I'd be like, heck yeah, bring them on. I said, no, I do not want your Mm hand-me-downs because I want to be super intentional with what I put into that space. And now I'm not saying that I was going to go drop a ton of money at whatever stores. I'm just saying that like that vibe wasn't the one that I was looking for. I was looking for simplicity. I was looking for just like everything in my closet being totally and completely my choice Mm -hmm. and not someone's secondhand stuff, which again, nothing wrong with that. Just not the vibe that I was looking Mm -hmm. for. So, but isn't that interesting? Like immediately there was space and the universe was like, here you go. And that just uh, happens to me every time, every yeah. time. It's, it's like pretty amazing, but like, then it gets into the, the bigger questions of, or the deeper questions like, okay, that's an actual, like we have proof that that happens. Mm-hmm. Sure. We're talking about a closet, but like, couldn't we apply that same energy to our bank accounts? Mm-hmm. Couldn't we apply that same energy to our internal work. Mm -hmm. Couldn't we apply that same energy to the relationships in our life, right? Like we get so afraid when we hold on to things that once we release it, it's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. But what we don't realize is that the space will be filled. And as you are more conscious of knowing who you truly are and what you truly want, Mm -hmm. you get to call in exactly what you want to fill those spaces. 
And I love that. And I think the listeners are going to be asking that question. Like, how do I call this in? How mm -hmm. do I set? So I can do this with my closet. Like mm -hmm. you just painted the picture. I could go purge. I can go clean it out. But now how do I do it with myself? Yeah. I think the beautiful part of being here in human is that once we have evidence, once we know it can be done, we can remind ourselves that it doesn't matter what the example was. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it's a great invitation to doing it mm -hmm. with ourselves for ourselves, because everything else is external mm -hmm. and the truth of who you are is not based on somebody else's external metric or external perception. It's about who you were designed to be. So doing that internal purge of the many nooks and crannies and closets that we have so deeply inside us, what a gift, right? Like to be able to say, sure, I've lived X number of years of this lifetime. I have gone through more than I could ever remember, never mind describe, right? But when we realize like, but I actually am in charge of those closets. Sure, things have happened to me that I had no control over. And now as a conscious creator of my life, of where I choose to go, right? Like talking about choice, I want to be really intentional with cleansing out the stuff that doesn't belong anymore. Cleansing out the stuff that felt hurtful and harmful and saddening and maddening mm -hmm. and replacing it with more of what I want, more of what feels good, more of that freedom mm -hmm. as opposed to bondage. Because I mean, that's actually a good way of thinking about it. When we have a closet, an internal closet that is filled with other people's clutter, mm -hmm. and then our own thoughts get manipulated based on what other people have trained us to think, be it, you know, word that they've said or something that we have witnessed, it keeps us in bondage. We are in bondage to those old thoughts, to those old stories. And so when we're talking about cleansing, when we're talking about releasing, what we're actually talking about is freedom. That's the power. Yeah. We are the mantra is I am free. That mantra has been my mantra this year is I am free, free to choose, free to be me, free, free, free. But it took a lot of work. <laughs> it took yeah, a lot sure. of work. It took yeah. going deep into, I call it like, like the cave. <laughs> I think the very first time we ever connected, I said to you, we're going deep. We're going deep. <laughs> I know we ready? jumped on, we jumped on the call and you were like, oh, this isn't just going to be a regular meet and greet. I was like, uh-uh, buttercup, like buckle up because <laughs> we're going we're diving. deep. Exactly. <laughs> and so how can people that are new to this work of releasing, letting go of what no longer serve you, how can they begin to slowly because it's like an onion, peel back the layers until they're able and feel safety enough to get to the deeper stuff. I well, I would say, first of all, don't do it alone, mm -hmm. right? Because we can get mired down with our old beliefs. We can mm -hmm. get mired down with those old thoughts and being cyclical, energetic, emotional beings. We've got to build the stamina to be able to look at that stuff mm -hmm. that you're ready to release so that you can, right? And I'm not saying it's all hard. I'm not saying that at all, but like, don't you don't have to do it alone. I actually believe on a primal level, we as women were not meant to do this work alone. Mm -hmm. We weren't meant to mother alone. We weren't meant to do the inner work alone like or anything in between, right? So again, I think that's another construct of society. Like put your head down, figure it out, get it done. Don't tell anybody your problems. Yeah. And I'm like- I'm just not available for that. I'm not available for it. So I think don't do it alone. Get support, get a coach, get a mentor, get a therapist. And I, my joke all the time is like this whole humaning thing is a team sport. Yeah. I have a coach, an energy healer, a therapist, doctors, chiropractor. I mean, I could go on and on and on like trusted friends, actual like blood sisters. Like we're not meant to do it alone. And in fact, when we are with other people, especially people who have the capacity and the ability and the passion to support you and see you in your highest truth and potential, I'm not mired down by any of your stuff, right? Like your internal stories are not mine to hold and carry. So I can hold the picture of potential for you because I'm not mired down by those. I've got my own stories, which is why I've got my own coach. Right. right. So I think like, that's the important thing. Like let's diffuse the old patriarchal story that like, you got to figure it out by yourself. Cause that's just not, that's not true. That's not real. The second piece, one of the 
first things that I ever started doing for myself was journaling. Mm -hmm. And I, I read a book once and it's, I just loved it so much. And it was such a simple sentence, but she said something to the effect of when you journal, you see your thoughts on paper, you can mm -hmm. see your thoughts essentially. Right. So like Josie, how often have you like gone through a day and it's been dizzying and it's been maddening. And like, you've thought the same, like four or five thoughts, just like rolling around your head. So for me, when I journal, it's like, I slough off that top layer of thoughts. Cause I think that we think, and I'm not a <laughs> like a neuro professional by any stretch of the imagination, but like, I think that we tend to think the same four or five thoughts, A, because it's easy because our brain is lazy and it wants to do the least amount of work. We got to create whole new neural pathways in there if we come up with new thoughts, right? So it's easy to think the same thoughts, but also I think that we're afraid that we're going to forget them. So if we get them down on paper, it almost mm -hmm. gives our brain permission to go deeper. What's the next layer down? Because usually the problem is not the first you know, set of marbles that's rolling around. So let's get those on the page so that we can either deal with them as they're coming out of us because we create new energy when we turn those thoughts into written word. But then we get to go, we can either deal with it as it's coming out or we can save it for later. Like, okay, I got that out. Now what's really going on, right? It's like the first batch of pancakes. Like the first batch of pancakes is like always the one that just like, they don't bubble right, then they burn. Like, it's just like, no, like let's get that first batch of pancakes out of the way so we can get to the good stuff. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, don't do it alone and start writing your thoughts down. And some people get very caught up in like, but I don't know how to journal. So here's what I would say. Either fill three pages or fill a page, right? Like just write, just write anything stream of consciousness, but have the intention to fill a certain amount of pages or right for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. especially when we're starting to do that energy work, we like to have some of those human constructs to support us in it. So either taking up that space or taking up the time or making lists. Mm -hmm. Some people think like, oh, when I journal, I have to write these like Shakespearean prose and it's all going to sound beautiful. Sometimes I doodle. Sometimes it's just words that I write. Sometimes it's bulleted lists because that's the way my mind is ticking right now. You can't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you get it out of you so that you can look at it from a different perspective, you're actually getting it right. No matter what it looks like. Yeah. Those would be my top two tips. Yes. That's so amazing. It's so great. As you're speaking, Tony Robbins voice that he says, if you're in your head, you're dead. Mm, kept coming yep. up in my head because it's so true. If we keep it in our heads, we're going back and forth with ourselves. It's like a, yeah. we're at war with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so if we come, we get it out on paper, like magic can begin to happen. And I love Truly. that you give them the invitation to say, you can deal with it as it comes out or you can save it for another day. Yeah. I love that. You just said that too, that magic comes in because here's the thing. A Course in Miracles says something to the effect of, oh, I'm not going to get it exactly right. But when we, essentially, when we fill our time, right? So like, if we're not going to do any of that releasing work, we filled our time, we have filled ourselves to the brim, we filled our closet to the brim, there's no space for a miracle to come through. When people tell me that they don't have time, I look at them, I'm like, ooh, you're just not willing to get intimate with yourself. I get it. That was me. That was me for the majority of my life. I was always busy. I was always on the go because I was afraid of what I would find if I slowed down. Right. But this is why I work with the moon now and why I help women work with the moon. Cause it's like, I've never seen a moon cycle that the moon has been full the whole time. Have you? Mm -hmm. No, it's not a thing. It's, it's, it's not a thing. It's not natural. So like, why do we think that we can do things that like the actual trees on the planet can't even do mm -hmm. the actual moon, like our luminary force in the sky can't do it's not natural. So when people say, I don't have time, I say, oh, get it. Yep. Gotcha. You're afraid of getting intimate with you. You're afraid of what you'll find. But truly, when we fill our time, just like when we fill our closets, the universe can't bring the magic that we seek. Mm -hmm. And then we become the victim and we're like, why isn't anything good happening for me? It's because there's no, there's no space for it. You are trying to control every ounce of your experience instead of saying, Hey, I'm just going to like, let this go. I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to open up and receive, but in order to receive, there's got to be space to receive, mm -hmm. right? Like we've got to have some sort of container to put that, which you want to receive in. So and that's, you know, hugely metaphorical for our very own bodies, our very own chakra systems, our very own cellular experiences.
Oh, it's so true. It's so true. You have to be able to have availability. You have to be available mm -hmm. for what is here for you. That's and right. the only way to get available is to slow down mm -hmm. and allow yourself to release and get intimate with yourself, mm -hmm. yeah. which like you said, a lot of us, like, like you said, running, staying busy. Mm -hmm. I was a pro at that. Mm -hmm. And so how can we begin to slow down and make ourselves a priority? What would be your tool or your trick? Or Well, if you're looking for a blueprint to follow, follow the moon cycle, truly follow the moon cycle, get to know the moon cycle, reach out to me. I'll, I'll give you all the, the, the tools and tricks and connections in order to do that. But essentially, I mean, you can Google it. There are 28 ish days to the moon cycle. Every two and a half ish days, we switch three ish days. We switch from a waxing phase to a waning phase. So if you're looking for an actual blueprint, do not follow some other humans because that worked for them, but it might not work for you. And then you'll just utilize that as a weapon against yourself. Follow nature, follow what is actually, actually naturally and energetically available to all of us, mm -hmm. right? So practice, okay, for the next couple of days, I'm going to wax. I'm going to be in go mode. I'm going to be in do mode. And then a couple of days after that, be in wane mode, be in rest and rejuvenate and receive mode and get used to it that way. Other things that you can do are f be intentional during your day. We're not meant to be on all the time. Put your phone, pick a time that you're going to put your phone into, you know, drawer jail and it doesn't <laughs> come out until the next day. Like there are little micro steps that we can take, but I think taking stock on how do you actually feel when you're constantly going and what do you actually need? and giving it to yourself. That takes practice. But imagine being that devoted to yourself. Again, it's freedom. To be that devoted to yourself. And I love that you put it in that way, to be devoted to yourself, to choose yourself, to mm -hmm. make yourself a priority. Yeah, so. I think some people look at it as, how can I have more self-discipline, mm -hmm. right? How can I be disciplined enough to take that time off mm -hmm. or put my phone away at 8 p.m.? or know that I have been in like launch mode for 10 days. So I could probably use a day of like, I don't know, sleep, <laughs> like, you know, just like rejuvenation, going for a walk in nature rather than being behind a computer. People look at that, like, I've got to be more disciplined. And I say, you have to be more disciplined. You've got to be more devoted. And the two can be interchangeable, but we have that, that word discipline has that like wounded masculine connotation to it a lot of the time. And it's like, we don't have to do it that way. We don't need to utilize discipline as punishment. Mm -hmm. What if we actually allowed ourselves to rejuvenate and we were devoted to that rejuvenation? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that I'm asking, but with way different energy behind it. So good. So much goodness here. And I, I can keep going if you're still up for girlfriend, I'm here for it. You bring it on. <laughs> keep going. And so you talked earlier about embodying your truth and being the fullest expression of yourself. And I think that topic is so relevant right now, yesterday, tomorrow <laughs> for us to become the true expression of ourselves and embodying who it is we are. So I would love for you to speak on first, what does an embodiment mean to you? Mm -hmm. And how are you using it in your life and your coaching to help people step into their trueness of who they are? I think embodiment is actually being fully present with the capabilities of our bodies mm -hmm. and utilizing our bodies as the sacred vessel to honor our emotions, to honor our thoughts and to truly flow, like be in flow, participate in life proactively rather than being reactive. I think embodiment means I, not only do I know who I am, but I understand that being here in human comes with the full spectrum of feelings right? There's neither good feelings nor bad feelings. There are different vibrations and some feel great in our bodies and some don't, but they're actually all meant to be felt. And can I take the feelings that I have right now, whether they are self-induced, whether it's a reaction to something that someone did or some, you know, something that I saw, can we be with that emotion and allow ourselves to feel it all the way through? so that we don't harbor it in our bodies, right? I think embodiment is being that personification of the essences that we have the capacity 
to feel and to emanate and to become. And so for me, with embodying the truth of who we are, it's understanding that we are multifaceted. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that there has been so much programming and we get to do some deprogramming so that we can reprogram in a good way. And it's embodying more of what we want to be because that's what our soul called us to. I mean, I truly believe that we are souls having a human experience. And in order for that to be true, this, our body, this is the tool that we have to do that, get to do that in, right? So embodiment is knowing, okay, I have this humanness to me, but if I'm following my soul's calling, if I'm trusting my intuition, I think our intuition is the messenger for our soul right? I think our intuition is actually the soul trying to get our intention, but how does that happen? Through feelings, right? We can't trust our intuition if we don't allow ourselves to feel and feeling is our body's greatest gift, right? So I think embodiment is being willing to feel and feel fully so that we can go to the places that we know, like that deep visceral knowing, not what your brain is telling you makes best sense, but like what you just know, like, you know, like, you know, third eye on chakra lit up, like goddess guiding your path, but we can't do that unless we feel it. And then I think it's more than embodiment. I think it is being able to express it, right? It's taking the gift that you've given yourself to feel so deeply and to feel so wholly holy and holy (laughs) so that you can go where you're meant to go. And then as you're going to express yourself fully along the way, I think we talk a lot and we hear a lot about embodiment, but like embodiment is only half the journey when we can allow ourselves to take all that we have, all the wisdom we've gained through our feelings, through connecting with our intuition, through connecting with cyclicality, and then express it to the world. That's the completion of the cycle to me. That's the part that's usually a little hard for us Mm -hmm. to bring that fullness of ourselves out into the world, because Mm -hmm. that feeling of I'm going to be judged, somebody so-and-so, if I shine my light in my, whose light in my dimming, like, I would love for you to speak on that because it is so, I mean, your light is so unique, so your own, so you, that you can't, I mean, you cannot not shine it, right? Yeah. I just like the coach in me is like, hmm, where does that story come from? Why do you believe that if you shine your light, it takes away from other people's light? Because if I, I have a candle right here, right? Like, so the listeners won't see it, but like I lit this candle. Guess what? If I grabbed another candle, which I usually have like six around me, but if I grabbed another candle, that one would light if I put the wick to the wick, right? It wouldn't take away from the first candle. I would simply have two candles from one, right? So that's an actual like physical experience of what this is, but we live in an abundant universe. There is no lack. There is no limitation. It's our ego. It's our human that decides like the hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. The, the, the beliefs that like, oh, well she has that. So I can't possibly, Mm -hmm. but what if she having that is actually proof that of course you can. Mm -hmm. right? So like, and then the judgments of like, oh, well, what, what what will people think? Right? Like, well, where's that? Where does that come from? Why does that matter? When people, I ask people two questions when stuff about, you know, what other people will think or what, how will other people judge them come up? I say, is that true? Is it true that Josie will judge Jillian if Jillian goes and does this? Right? So two things could happen there. It might not actually be true. That might be a fearful story that your ego has been telling you to keep you small. That's our ego's job, right? So like the story that you're telling yourself, like, oh, Josie's going to judge Jillian. That might not actually be true. Or it might be true. Josie might judge Jillian, but that's on Josie. If she's judging me, that's her own stuff. And so the second follow-up question I have to, is it true, is does it matter? Mm. Does it actually matter? Jillian, if Josie judges her, it matters to our ego because our feelings get hurt. But when we recognize that her judgment has nothing to do with your autonomy as a person, with your, the sacred calling that your soul signed up for, I mean, off you go, girlfriend, off you go, do your thing. Because ultimately 
if one person is judging another person, that poison is happening in their body, not yours. Right. So understanding that you don't have to be mired down by other people's opinions, other people's judgments, because they're not living your life. And it's that same, it's that premise of like, you know, people who have done what you want to do usually don't judge you because they know what it takes, right? Like they know how hard the, the, that work you put in was, or not, it doesn't even have to be hard. Like how devoted you were to doing the thing. They know that passion. They know the conviction people who have done what you want to do aren't going to judge you. It's people that aren't willing to do it. And so they feel like if they tear you down, it'll make them feel better. We all know that that doesn't work. That is like some second grade, second level BS that like we (laughs) we tried to protect ourselves with when we were little and it just doesn't work. And unfortunately, when we're not willing to do that deeper work as adults, we get caught up in that. That's just inner child, inner, Mm -hmm. I call it inner maiden goddess stuff that just needs to be healed. Truly. Yes. And that inner child piece is so, it's so relevant. Mm -hmm. It's so relevant. Like we think, we think as we're acting today, the beliefs that were that even that judgment belief that we were just discussing, Mm -hmm. it does, it comes from second grade Mm -hmm. and now we're full blown adults and we're still, we're still believing that. And so doing that little bit of inner child work or a lot of it of inner child work. Yeah. Again, that word freedom comes out for me. Totally. Because we can recognize that when we go back and say that really sucked, that really hurt my inner second grader was, is so sad still. And she is holding on to such fear when we can go back and soothe her, when we can bring love to Mm -hmm. places it's never been before. Not only do we allow for more release and more freedom, but we actually take back the reins, Mm. right? Because when, when we're fearful as this adult version of you, it's like letting a second grader drive the bus. Mm. When you are afraid, it's like you are giving the steering wheel to your inner child and say, go for it, figure it out. When like, really it's our job as adults now to say, Hey, little girl, you were hurt and you were sad. And I get that. And it's okay. And guess what? I've got us. us. I'll drive now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to try to figure this out. You don't have to take the steering wheel. You can just sit back Mm -hmm. with your sweet little teddy bear and your little juice box. Like you wanted to do when you were that age. But then this, this experience happened and it it programmed you for some yuck. That's okay. We as humans sign up for it. And as human adults, we get to go back and we get to soothe and we get to love those inner pieces of us so that we can actually do the things that we were meant to do yeah. with love. And what a gift it is, right? What an honor it is to be able to go back and parent that younger version of yourself. At least mm-hmm. that's how it's been for me. It's such an honor to go back and witness what a joy, what a brilliant light that little, little version of me, like, yeah, what a yeah. light. I mean, we gave little Josie a Lamborghini when last time we talked. So how's she doing? She driving around? Oh, she's driving around, having a good old time. She is feeling free. That's the mantra. I am free. We are free to be who we have decided, who we've chosen to be. And it's a matter of, again, peeling back that onion and doing that inner work. And so I love that we're having this conversation today of releasing and using nature as our guide. Mm -hmm. Like nature is, doesn't lie. No. Nature doesn't lie. It's the truth always and forever. And so if we can start to rely on that more, that's the big takeaway for me. If we can start to rely on nature more and get in sync with it, our lives will change. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah so and I good. change back to the way that we were always designed to function with, yeah. right? Like we follow other people's instruction manuals and we've got technology telling us what to do all over the place. And it's like, so grateful, right? So grateful. I mean, literally you and I are talking in different States. We are looking at a screen and I can see the glow in your cheeks. Like you are like, like we get to do this and also go outside, go lay down in the rain, go put your hand on a tree because that was here first. That naturalness is the original landscape and it's all it's like the heartbeat of mother mm-hmm. earth is calling to our heartbeats oh so beautifully said so good so i would love for you to tell our listeners where they can come and be in your world where they can mm. come and get come more hang out with me 
come hang out on Instagram. That's that's like the 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 main kingdom, queendom, if you will, at Jillian Boland. So it's just my first and my last name. And then my website is www.jillianbolands.com. I'm on Facebook as well. So yeah, come, come hang out. Come like send me a message. Tell me you listened to Josie's podcast. And that's how we connected. I would love to get to know you all better. I would love to serve you. Josie, when you and I first started chatting, we were like, oh, you know, bring true connection back into our realities, bringing, bringing sisterhoods together, bringing circles together. I love bringing women together in mm-hmm. circle. And I mean, to that point of like, oh, well, if she has it, then I can't possibly have it. It's like, no, there is always space. We have done this since it was duck, duck, goose mm-hmm. days. All you have to do is scooch back a little bit, right? That's it. Just like make a little room. The circle can always mm-hmm. get wider. Oh, I love that visual of the Jack Duck Goose days. Remember? <laughs> I sure do. Oh, and that's what it's about. It's about playing and finding that pleasure and remembering that pleasure. Mm-hmm. So you've given us so many visuals today of that pleasure, of that joy, of that oneness, of that connectedness back to earth. And after this conversation, I always like to give my guests the floor and let you speak whatever is on your heart. After this conversation, what has landed for you and what do you feel called to share? to the brilliant mamas that are listening. First of all, you're doing a really, really, really amazing job. And the counter to that or the periphery of that or the next chapter of that is it's not just about doing a good job. It's about being. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you, don't base your worthiness on your go style metrics, Mm -hmm. right? Like your worthiness is not based on how much you can wax, right? You are worthy no matter what you do. You are worthy because of who you are. And when you can take action because you have received inspiration based on that beingness of you, that action is going to be the most potent, the most delicious, the most magical action ever, 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 ever. Oh, so good. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you. Such big hugs. Big hugs, huge hugs. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are an all podcast places you listen. We are also on YouTube. If you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman, you can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby (laughs) and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us and thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools. It's simple. It doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me. Jump into my world. I've got you.